Hey, good morning. God bless you this morning. God keep you this morning. Praise God. And thank you for tuning on to me once again. As always, you know, I'd be like listening to other preachers and ministers on YouTube talking about the Word of God. And they be like saying, you know, as, as I, I be getting also about people want you to explain, you know, ask you all these questions. Like you have all the answers, you know, instead of them trying it themselves and reading for their own self and not just reading and being listeners, but also being doers. God looking for some doers doing the will of God. And um, I was like agreeing with him, saying amen and everything. And, you know, because um, I get the same thing too, you know. I mean, that's why I say the devil know the book too. The devil know the Bible probably just as more than you do, the more than the doers do. You know, they know it, they can quote it, they can, you know, read it and take scripture to scripture. But at the same time, are they really living it? Are they really doing the will of God for their own life? It's easy to quote the Bible and read and tell somebody to read and do this and do this and study and meditate. But is you doing it, making it your life? Or are you doing the will of God for your life? You know, you sharing with others, telling others about the word of God. When you can quote and, and uh, speak on how the world is, you want to blame the world, want to blame Christians for their actions, you know, then it's talking about, well, why, you know, the world's so messed up, they're doing gay, they're doing this, doing that because of church folk, because of Christians. That's just all the excuse. You know, even though I'm not a Christian, as I always say, I'm not a Christian, I'm a believer. But, you know, they try to pinpoint of what the world, why the world like it is, you know. Because of lack of understanding. They don't want the word of God. They don't want to do what's right. They want to do what they want. They want, they want to do what they want to do their own way. They want to do their own doing. You can't make somebody go to church. You can't make somebody hear the word of God. You know, they have to make that choice also. You know, I mean, you know, just like, you know, people just, you know, try to pinpoint on ministers, your minister, church, and all this stuff. I ain't going to do They all messed up, you know, and, and this and that. I mean, this is all kind of nonsense. This, to me, it's just all foolishness and excuses. You know, it's like if you know these things, why you don't have your own? Why you're not going out to people talking about the Word of God? But you want to tell somebody else that's on YouTube or wherever else they are about, you know, telling them to read, which that's what we do. We do read. That's what I'm doing. That's what I do. I read. That's what I do. Read every day. Praise God. Not just I'm reading. I'm also praying for each and every last one of you. And I'm also a doer. It's about doing the will of God. You know, have you ever felt like you've been portrayed by somebody? You know, feel like you left out? You know, you feel like you just, you know, they ain't done nothing wrong being betrayed by somebody. You know, doing a cues or something that you didn't do. You know, I mean, well, that's what Jesus went through. Jesus been betrayed, you know, Jesus been in prison and everything. He's been accused, been locked up or something that he didn't do. You know, it's like, you know, the they how they deal with Jesus, how they treated Jesus. You know, it's like, look at the world, the one that's on course, the one that's in the world of God, the one that stands spiritual, the one that to do what's right, or at least trying to do what's right, they're going to be picked on. It's going to be always somebody has something to say. When you know you ain't doing wrong, when you know you're living for the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're doing the right thing, it's always somebody going to pinpoint and, and try to find something on you and ask questions, and ask questions, you know, like pick it on you, just like they did Jesus. So I know if they picked on Jesus, you know, I mean... They'll pick on me and they'll pick on you too. You know, any way they can get. Any way, any, any answer, whatever question they have, they're going to do. You know, I mean, what makes you think they're not going to pick on you? You know, uh, say anything about you. When they did Jesus like that long time ago, and it's still going on, going on right now. It's picking on, trying to find somebody who they can go after. That's what the devil do also. Picking, picking, picking. Whether you're a minister, a pastor, whatever, in church, or so-called Christian, whatever. Believers, whatever, you know, you this, you that, but you ain't going to go out the world while the world messed up because of Christians. That's why the world messed up because of you. That's why the world messed up because of the church. The world messed up because of them. The lack of knowledge. You know, they don't want to understand it. They don't want to do the will of God for their life. They're making all these excuses, you know, to cover what they want to do. But for their wrong, it's what they want to do in life. But that's their choice. You can't make somebody hear the word. You can't make somebody read the word. You can't make somebody go to the house of the Lord. You can't make somebody do that, that you know, none of these things. You can't make nobody listen to me on YouTube. They click on and listen and hear and everything. But, you know, it's like what I would say. You know, if you don't like it, you don't want to, uh, uh, you don't want to hear the world. You don't want, you don't like it. You, you ain't got to tune on to this. Tune on to something else that don't make no sense. Tune on to some foolish stuff with the world, though. You know, tune on to something else that, you know, then you don't even, um, you know, Whatever you set your mind on, tune on something. You ain't got to hear this message. You ain't got to hear no preaching. You ain't got to hear no minister. You ain't got to hear none of these people 
talking about the world of God and everything. You know, just do, just be free and, and just do whatever you want to do. Because like I said all the time, as I always going to keep on continuing to say nothing works without God. I don't care who you are, what you look like, what you do, or what you say. It ain't going to change me how I am. And it's not going to change me of me doing the will of God for my own life. And, and it's not going to change to stop me from praying for each and every last one of you, whether if I'm on YouTube or not. Like always somebody, you always have some comments, some always have somebody, always have something to say. But praise God, I'm going to keep on doing what I'm doing. Then I said, no, ain't no wrong with you doing everything, but you don't know where you come from, this and that. You ain't about where I'm coming from, but where I, you know, where I've been, it's about where I'm going. You, That's what my mind is at, it's about where I'm going. I'm looking forward, I'm not looking backwards. I'm looking forward, I'm trying to go on, moving on. Praise God. It's not important to God, what's important to God is being doers. Loving him, loving others, that's what's important to God, keeping his commandment. You know, doing what's right, living right. You know, treating everyone right, helping somebody. You know, praise God. That's what it's all about. That's what God wants you to do. He wants your heart. You know, you know, He don't want all that what you talk about, all the outside stuff. You know, where you been and all. He ain't looking at your past. When the world looking at your past, the world trying to figure you out. It's like when you get put applications in or something like that. They worry about your past. Have you been a uh? arrested and everything, or are you on drugs, all this, you know, do you mind taking a drug test, yes or no, and all this kind of stuff, they worry about all that, they, they looking at your past, you know, God don't worry about all that, looking at your past, even though he already know anyway, so God, it don't even matter to God, but the world, it matters to the world, they want to know your, your background, they want to know these things, praise God, that's why all of I'm in the world, not other world. Yeah, them things be asked when application, whatever, you know. But if I ain't got nothing to hide, I don't, I don't care answering. I mean, you know, people uh been locked up, criminal record, probably just got out of jail and, and got hired. It's not about where you're being, it's about where you're going. If you change, get your mind changed and set on the right thing, and you change, you're a changed person, you know, God can change you. God can deliver you. He will deliver you if you believe and make up your mind if you want to do right or you want to do wrong because good and bad don't mix. Make up your mind what you want to do for your life. At the same time, without God, nothing works. I'm going to read here out of Luke chapter uh, 20. I'm going to read Luke chapter 22. I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to read verse. I'm going to read verse 47. Talk about Jesus in betrayal. You know, betrayed and arrested. So if I know they did Jesus like that, you know, just look around, they doing anybody else like that. Especially the one that's on course, especially the one that's doing right, especially the one that's on punch with the word of God, in other words. Living right, doing what's right, loving one another. No matter what, spite of what they say, you still continue to do on, keep on going on. Don't stop looking because somebody says something trying to figure out about this and that, where you from, this and that, read this, read that, you don't know this, you don't know that. God knows what you know. It's all, it don't even matter what they think, what they trying to pinpoint on you. All I know is God knows. That's all that matters. God knows who I am, where I've been, where I'm from, and he knows most important about where I'm going. Praise God. But anyway, I'm going to read uh, verse, verse 47 of Luke 22. It says, but even as Jesus said, this a crowd approached, led by Judah, one of the twelve disciples. Judah walked over to Jesus to greet him with a kiss. But Jesus said, Judah, would you betray the son of man with a kiss? When the other disciples saw that was about to happen, they exclaimed, exclaimed, Lord, should we fight? We bought the sword, and one of them struck at the high priest slave slashing off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Jesus Then Jesus spoke to the leaders, priests, the captain of the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him. Am I some dangerous revolutionary? He asked that you come with sword and club to arrest me. Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there every day. But this is your moment, the time when the power of darkness ran. And that's also in the book of John chapter 18, verse 3 and 11. And also talk about Peter denied Jesus. And here in verse 54, it talks about Peter denied Jesus. It says, so they arrested him and led him to the high priest's home. And Peter followed at a distance the guard 
lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it. And Peter joined, and Peter joined them. There, a servant girl noticed him in the fight. I mean, in the firelight. And began staring at him. Finally, she said, "This man was one of Jesus' followers." But Peter denies it. Woman, he said, "I don't even know him." After a while, someone else looked at him and said, "You must be one of them." No, man, I'm not. It says, "No, man, I'm not." And uh, Peter restored. About an hour later, someone else insists, "This must be one of them, because he is a Gentile too." But Peter said, man, I don't know what you are talking about. And immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. At the moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly the Lord's word flashed through Peter's mind before the rooster crowed, tomorrow morning you will deny three times that you even knew me. And Peter left the courtyard weeping bitterly. And that's also in the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 67 and 68. And this next verse talks about Peter. No, the next verse talks about Jesus before the council. Jesus before the council, that's in verse 66. It says, at daybreak, all the elders of the people assembled, including the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. Jesus was led before this high council. And they said, tell us, are you the Messiah? But he replied, if I tell you, you won't believe me. And if I ask you a question, you won't answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated in the place of power of God's right hand. They all shouted, so are you claiming to be the Son of God? And he replied, you say that I am. Why do you, it says, why do you, why do we need other witnesses? They said, we all self heard him say it. And that's also in the book of Mark, chapter 14, verse 61 through 64. And, um, you know, it goes on and on. The next, you know, verse talks about, you know, the next chapter, chapter 23 talks about Jesus' trial before, uh, before Pilate. And, um, you know, just being accused and how Peter denied Jesus three times. It's like you're being around somebody good. You know they're not bad at all. But you get around folk, you know, you want to act like, you know, you ain't been around or you ain't seen this person before or whatever. You know, you start changing. It's like you get around somebody supposed to be your friend and everything and somebody might not like that person. And then they told you or whatever you told that person, well, I don't be around them either. But one of them days they probably see you with them. You said, uh, I, well, I, I see you one day around, uh, with that person, you know, blah, 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 you know. I don't even, you know, deal with that person. But why are you dealing with that person? I wasn't with him. I, you didn't see me. It wasn't with somebody else. You didn't see me. You know, denying, you know, knowing a person is good. And the one you want to hang out with, it ain't no good. You know, but you want to, uh, you know, be around somebody that's no good because they see you with somebody that's good. You know they're good. They, you know they're good people, whatever, or whatever situation it is. But it's like Peter, he denies Jesus. No, he ain't done nothing wrong. No, he's a good person. You deny him three times over and over and over. Just like that's why I was saying, look around you. Let's put your own life in that situation. Look who probably betrayed you. You know, Look who probably lied against you or lied on you or whatever. You know, because somebody don't like you. You know, you could be free. Y'all could all know each other, but out the whole crowd, somebody don't like you. You know, somebody pretend like they like you and they really don't. Or somebody that's been around you, like you've been around you, like your company, or you good people. Maybe they get tired of being around the people that's uh, bad or whatever, not doing nothing good in their life, and you can consider yourself, you know, trying to play it off like, you know, you're really tired of being around them, but you're trying to please them by staying around them because they, you know, they ain't all up to no good, but, you know, get around somebody that's good and doing what's right, you know, you get comfortable and you know that person is good, but, you know, the outside of your other, you know, may not like it because they don't want to do what's right. They don't want to live what's right and, and do the will of, will of God or whatever it is. They don't want to do what's right, period. I'm just making a point, you know, to pitch your own self. That's what I do. I pitch my own self. I pitch my own life as I read, you know, and then I get certain comments on YouTube, you know, like, it's like, why are you wasting your time trying to tell me to read? And this is what I do. I read every day. This is what I do. Read. I'm reading to each and every last one. This is what I do. Read. You know, you can't tell me to go back and read this, read this, read that. 
And what you think I'm doing? What you think I'm doing every day? I'm reading the one that's probably first getting on, ain't seeing me. Look how many videos I have. Look at the numbers. Go back. Go look at all of them. Go listen to all of them. And you'll know where I'm coming from also. If you'd have been from day one listening to me what I'm saying all the way until now. You're going to be asking me to read, read, read. Because you can see as I'm doing every day. Read. I'm reading, reading, reading. And praying, praying, praying. For everyone, even if I'm not on YouTube. You just always somebody got something to say, whether it's good or bad, whatever. Just always people just have something to say, you know, all the time. You know, so I know if they did Jesus like that, you know, they gonna do me like that. And you too, and you too goes on and on and on and on. He's saying stuff. He's making comments, telling me somebody gonna tell you something too. You know, Reverend, you know, somebody gonna goes on and on and on. Somebody can tell you something too, whether it's good or bad. They are gonna tell you something too. Now, you may not like it. You may like. It, you may not say it. You may not comment. But I don't have to answer. To this world, you know, the only one I need to answer to is God. That's it, the Creator, the one who made me. That's the only one I need to answer. So I ain't got to answer no questions to nobody. I ain't got to prove nothing to nobody. As I always say, I'm not a people's pleaser, which I'm not. I'm not a people's pleaser. I'm not a Christian neither. You know, I am a believer. You know, I'm into doing the will of God. Besides just reading them, you know, to you all and just sharing. You know, probably a little things out of my life, what I went through, or whatever, and past, just to make an example. You know, somebody, you, some, some may, somebody, you know, could be you, or somebody else may probably, probably with the same thing and understand why I'm making my point. You know, just look, take a look of your own life, you know, what you went through, with how God brought you out, and everything, you know, it comes from understanding. Somebody, somebody, somebody can just need to hear the word. Somebody just know what I'm, under, uh, know what I'm talking about. That you picture your own life and everything and see how God bring you out, bring you through when somebody that you supposed to be your friend, whoever, your own family, you know, you thought was going to help you, thought you was going to uh, keep you uh, company, company, company or whatever, you know, doing your mix of your pain or your downfall or whatever, you know, you can really see who your real friends and all families is, you know, when you're down, you know, they want to leave you, but when you get up, boy, they want to come around you. And want to, you know, kick it with you. Hey, I see you a long time, all that kind of stuff. You know, they're not interested in what you're talking about. They're interested in what you got, what you have, what you what you got going on in your life. You know, what the devil do, a sneaky devil. You going to creep all up. You don't want to be around you when you got a thing going. You up you, you up on top. You, you you know, you got it going on. But when you were down, oh, they don't want to be around. I'm talking about the supposed to be real friend. They got some real, real friends that stick close to the brothers and be with you all the way to the end, whether you're down or, or whatever. You know, I know this person right now today when I first met him and everything, you know, he's my ex-boyfriend. He's my ex. And I'm thinking, you know, my mom, I'm like, I got to have to keep on praying and praying and praying. But we was going together, kicking it everything, you know. And, um, as I kept on praying, he, my, he was like, I'm going to be with you to the end. I'm going to help you to the end. And I'm looking at him like, okay, you know, so, and then, you know, it just haven't stopped. You know, I've been like, you know, knowing him from like the six or seven years now. You know, it's like I had two jobs, and before, you know, I had two jobs. I, I was working and everything, but you know what? He he helped me out still. He he got a job, too. He, I mean, like I, like I said, you know, he should be a Marine. He's a, he's a veteran. He served his country, praise God. But he's a Marine, ex-Marine, but, um. You know, he's just like, and when he said that, I ain't never heard nobody, no man ain't never told me that before. I'm going to be with you to the end. I'm going to help y'all over to the end. You don't care what you say, what you do. You know, I'm like, wow. You know, I broke up with him one time and called myself trying to go with this so-called preacher, the man of God supposed to be. But all that was a set-up devil, you know, and they're the one who I left. You know, because he was going through some stuff, and I mean, I, I didn't have time. He didn't want to hear the word of God. He didn't want to do the word. He didn't want to do what's right. You know, I'm like, good or bad, just don't miss. You know, I'm thinking that he was going to be my husband. I'm thinking that I kept on praying that God would show me that he wasn't. Maybe he could just be in my life just to just to bless me with whatever extra what I need. Maybe it's what it was. I don't know. Wait, maybe it's what it is, but I wasn't going to turn it down. You know, somebody want to help me. I'm not going to turn it down, you know, for help, whatever little help that, you know, I may need. Oh, I, I need it, whatever, you know, but I'm, I wasn't going to turn it down. I'm going to give it. I'm, I'm going to take it, you know, but um, God bless them to have it. God want to bless them to give it to me, so I'm going to accept it. But anyway, he was always telling me, you know, when I did, you know, leave him alone for a little while and wind up uh, meeting somebody else who I thought was so into the world of God. Well, they know the book, know the book, know the book and all that real good, pray real good and everything, but, you know, wasn't living right. 
deep inside, he just wasn't living right. But I, you know, I kept on praying. God would show me whatever I need to know. God would show me. He revealed whatever situation that I need to know. He revealed that person to me. Whatever's going on, whatever it was in a closed, high secret. Because he told me, like I said in my early videos, the only video what I said back in probably early 2012 about this man, you know, pretending, pretend to be something that he not. Still in the world where still, you know, sneaky devils out there. Even you could be calling yourself a minister or whatever it is, still sneaky devils. You know, told me he was divorced. You know, trying to find out he was married. That's why God that's why I know God revealed it to me. God revealed himself to me, whether it was through computer or whatever, he revealed it to me. But he told me for a while, I was I'm divorced. I ain't I'm you know I'm you know, I mean just straight line. Just just straight line, just get what he want. At least try to thought he was gonna get what he want, whatever. But anyway, I mean, then my so-called, you know, associate, you know, ex, whatever you want to call it, social, I still, you know, talk to him every now and then, you know, help him out, whatever, we help each other out, you know, every now and then, I'm still talking about the Word of God, I'm still praying for him, I ain't gave up on about the Word of God, I ain't gave up on about still praying for him and everything, but kicking and doing stuff that we used to do all the time, you know, <laughs> that, that, don't, that don't, that's not happening, that, that ain't even you know, happening. Yeah, I feel short, you know, praise God. I feel short and get back lined up, you know, the Word of God, get back in order with God. Not to stay on that course, you know, stay on that path, but, you know, I'm just making the point I'm just making is with the thing that he said out of his mouth, I'm going to be with you to the end. And that's what exactly is. He, he's still around. He's still doing the thing what he said he's going to do and, and continue to do it. And I'm like, well, it's a blessing to me, but thank you. Appreciate it, no problem. I know without God, none of us anyway. Without God, you wouldn't still be working. You would still be here without God. Anyway, so I know that it's God, you know, putting in you to help me. Whether you don't want to hear the word of God or don't. You know, he, I know it's God, you know, sending you to help me for a reason. It's for a reason. You know, you know what I mean? You know, it's like, uh, it's like God accept the sinner. He accept them. You know, I mean, it's like Jesus helped the sinner. You know, he still did good to the sinner. You know, they did him wrong. So, it's like, why can I? Jesus did it. Why can I? You know, help somebody. We help each other, whatever. So, why can I? I was wrong with that. You know, ain't like we sleeping together. We ain't even doing any of that stuff. So, why can I help? Why can't he help me? You know, but he's doing it on his own. You know, I'm going to say, no, I want that or whatever. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I got two jobs now. I'm good. But he, he still want to give me extra. So, I accept it. I taste it. So it's like he said what he said. You know, when I said power on the tongue, he said to the end. You know, to the end, to the end, to the end. See, we leave this earth. And I'm like, well, praise God. I appreciate it until God move in and, you know, put something else, you know, in my life. Praise God. But God always know what he's doing anyway. But anyway, I, I forgot what the point I was trying to make. Oh, yeah, about a friend. You know, sometimes she uh, close to the brother, you know. It's like when I had some or when I didn't have nothing like that person, he was already he's still there. What you need, you need help on this, what you, what you need, I mean, you know, something like that, you know. It was like he was there. He was there all the time. He still, he, he still is around. Praise God, he still is around. But anyway, God bless. You know, I'm just making a point, you know. You know how people do. And I'm pretty sure you know, you all know how people do. You know, pretend like they're your friends and they're really not. That's why I tell my kid, you don't have no friends. Y'all call them just somebody to talk to, just associate, you know, you, I mean, y'all just kids right now. You wait till you keep, keep on living, keep on watching, keep paying attention, and you'll know who's who. You'll know who's real and who's not real. That's why I tell my kids to stay in the world, no matter where you're at, where you're going, uh, or whatever you're, you're doing in your life, always keep God first. You know, keep God, make up your source every day of your life. Don't stop reading, don't stop praising God, don't stop doing the thing with, you know, you supposed to have been brought up in church to do. Don't depend on no man. Depend on God, because a man, the world will let you down. When you ain't got God, the world will let you down. When you got God to know who he is and know how he works, you don't need nobody else. The God will send folks, you know, you probably didn't even recognize, the problem, probably not even like, that comes around and give you stuff. God will work in mysterious ways. He'll send folks, you don't even like, he, he'll send folks, you may even think, will do something for you. He'll send some, uh, some weird folks sometime in your life to do stuff for you. Yeah, I know it be God. Praise God. And I hope you know it too. And I hope you know too. And like I always say, the devil know this book too. The devil know the trick. The devil know the game too. The devil know this book. Probably better me and you. He know this book in the back of his head. He can remember. He can quote scriptures and everything else. He's trying to see what you know, how much you know, what you going to say. 
So, I mean, because all can be a game, you know what I mean? You know, pinpointing this and all that, but you ain't got to an answer. You ain't got to fall for that. You know, minister, preacher, no, no matter who you are, you ain't got to fall for the, you know, just remember the devil know the book too. The devil was in heaven before. The devil got kicked out of heaven. The devil's up there too, so he knows the world. He just don't know when, when the blessings gonna hit. He don't know when you gonna get what God has for you. That's what he don't know. But anyway, the devil got some sneaky devils. You gotta watch them too. The praise God for says about doing the will of God. It's a different when you're doing it, the will of God, and when you're not doing the will of God. It's a different. You'll know who's doing it. You'll know who's real or not. Just pay attention. Look at them. You know, watch them. You know, it's like your so-called minister preachers I was with. Watch them, pay attention, and always pray. And ask God, you need you you need them right now in this situation. You need to see who this man really is and what he's all about and what he's after. You got some sneaky devils out there they're after something. Oh, well, I don't care if you're a minister, pastor, no matter. They're after something. I always want something. I mean, not everybody's not like that, but you know, that's like I said, the devil know the book, too. They got some sneaky devils out there. You got to be careful. Be focused and be just be ready. That's all I gotta say. Be ready. Be ready. Cause I mean, I have to. I have to be ready. I mean, I'm not. He didn't give me five senses and I use. Be ready. Praise God. But anyway, I wanted to share with you my other book, your God instruction book. Um. Uh, Proverbs chapter 29 verse 11 says that fool utterly all his mind, but a wise man keep it, it in till afterwards. Swallowing anger, swallowing anger words is much better than having to eat them. Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 and 15 says to forgive, you no know, says for if ye forgive men that trespass, your your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men that trespass, neither will your Father forgive your trespassing. To forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover the prisoner was you. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 24 and 25 says, Make no friendship with an angry man, with, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Least thou learn his ways, and get a snare to thy soul. The company you keep will determine the trouble you meet. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24 says, He who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him diligently. See, many parents are not on spanking turn with their children. Matthew chapter 14, verse 28 and 29 says, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, hide me, come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Man cannot discover new ocean unless he has the courage to lose sight of the shore. John chapter 15 verse uh, 13 says, Greater love hath no man than his, it says, Greater love, greater love hath no man than this, that man lay down his life for his friend. The heart is the happiest when it beats for others. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 9 says, He also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is greater waster. One thing you can learn by watching the clock is that it passes time by keeping his hand you know, by keeping his hands busy. Psalms uh, 14 verse 1 says, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. Look what the fool say, There is no God. He says, Now there is even a dial of prayer. For after it, 
you call a number and nobody answer. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 6 says, A fool lips bring him strive, and his mouth invite a beating. He who thinks by the inch and talks by the yard deserves to be kicked by the foot. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 11 says, As ye know how ye exhort and comfort and charge every one of you as a father do his children. The best inheritance of a father can leave his children is a good example. Let me read this last one. It says in Revelation chapter 3 verse 30, I mean verse 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him, soup with him, and he with me. God interfered. God interference is the affair of men by invitations only. Praise God. And I was uh, telling somebody, I said, you know what? I said the people who I know most of most of the people who I know that's uh, but they used to go to church. They used to be it's like they used to be in the world, but it's like they just stopped and gave up, you know, whatever issue. I ain't hardly asked all of them, but the one that I do know, he just, you know, I said the devil don't want you to know the truth. The devil don't want you to stay in the world. The devil don't want you to do nothing right. The devil wants to get all outside the line, off, you know, off course and everything. When you know you, you know it's the guy. You know, believe in God, but the time now you don't want to do with the guy. You want to live right. You don't want to do what's right. I said one thing I said about this one man when I was saying, you know. He's still here. He's still around. Whatever, uh, you may ask what I need. Sometimes I don't hear. Sometimes he don't even ask me. He just give it. He just give it to me. So I'm like, wow. Well, praise God. Bless you. But anyway, at the same time, then he'd be like, you love me? You love me? I'm like, no. I don't love you like that, but I love you because God says so. I'm not in love with you. I love you because God says so. So let's get that straight. I'm not in love with you. I thought you were going to be the one, but God showed me some things. So it's not happening. It's not nothing like that. But he understands. But he want to play around. Yeah, but I love you. I'm like, well, maybe you do. Because I'm a, lo I'm a lovable person. I mean, you know, you can love me all you want to. I mean, you know, you're good. Pray God. But if you don't love yourself, how you going to say you love me? And you don't love God. So he could answer that. But anyway. But I say, uh, I told uh, somebody I, somebody else that I'm not. So one thing I say about this person, at least I'm going to keep it real. You know, he ain't saved. He don't want to change yet. Yeah, he don't want to do the will of God right now. But at least I know he keep it real. That's what I said about people that's still sinning, doing their own way, doing their own, you know, thing. Knowing that they need God, but they don't want to accept it right now. At least I know he keep it real. I know what he's lying. I know what he's telling the truth. I know how he's living. He ain't got nothing to hide. That's what I said about sinners. They ain't got nothing to hide. They don't care. I mean, I already know this person. The one that supposed to be in the world of God, the one supposed to be talking about they love God, I love God, I keep his commandment, I do this, I do that, and I'll talk about the world of God for others, and I'll pray for others. You know, they're not even living right. They're not even doing the will of God. They're not even doing what God's hoping to do. They don't even want to stay with their own wife. Lying to somebody that's saying they divorced. Lying to somebody that's saying they never was married. And these supposed to be preachers. These supposed to be ministers. These supposed to be the strong leaders of, you know, churches or whatever. Or leaders of their own self. You know, supposed to be out helping up the outreach ministry or whatever you want to call it. They want supposed to be keeping it real. They don't want supposed to be having these good examples for others. You know, then they wonder why the world talks about these preachers and ministers because they don't be keeping it real. You know, I mean, you know, I'd rather be with somebody. At least I know this person that he, he's a sinner. He, he's a sinner. I know, you know, he don't want to live. He don't want to do what's right. At least I know these things. But the one that want to pretend ministers and all these kind of stuff, whatever. Supposed to be in the world of God, supposed to say they who they are, and you love God, keep it up there. They're not even doing it. So it's like, I, I, I mean, I, to make if I had a choice, really made a choice, better one, I'm, I'm gonna be in the world of God. I have to do God is my source. You know, God have God is my number one, so He has to be there for me in my life. But I'm just saying, if I wasn't, you know, uh, I didn't care who I wanted to be or who I wanted to marry. You know, it would be with this sinner. Because at least I know this sinner is keeping it real. He ain't got nothing to hide. He don't care. He's out in the open. You know, he ain't trying to sneak and dodge and all this kind of stuff. You know, when he's being him. When, you know, what I'm just saying, keeping it real. You know, you know everything about it. You know all the bad stuff. Know, you know what's going on. Know when he's lying. Know when he's telling the truth. Know he's real. You know, I mean, he's keeping it real. What they say, keeping it real. That's all to it. I'd rather be somebody that's a sinner. 
Then he that ain't hiding. And they had then they gotta play like he's somebody that is not he keeping it real. He's he, he, he's out there, he, I'm sinner, I'm I'm you know doing what I'm doing. Now, I ain't got no dope I ain't gotta prove to nobody, stuff like that, but when you go to these like I said, supposed to be ministers and everything, preachers and man of God and leaders and everything, they do all this stuff, they they quote the Bible, they read, they can tell you about it and everything, but at the same time they they not living right. Their life is not right. They lying, they they doing stuff that it ain't lying up the world of God, you find these things out later. It's like, who are you fooling? You're not fooling nobody but yourself. Get right. Do the right thing. Be real. Be real with yourself. God already know you're playing. God already know. And then they wonder why things happen. You know, such and such. Blah, blah, blah. Pastor, blah, blah, blah. Pass away. This and that. He was good this. He was a good that. In y'all eyes, he showed that goodness in front of y'all. He pretend these good things in front of y'all. But the behind closed door, he's a different person. And God knows, you know, and God, God, I'm telling you, God allows stuff to happen. Quit playing with the, the Bible. Quit playing church. Keep it real. Every day, not just when you be in front of other church folks. You know, when you're being in a building, I don't mean, don't pretend. You keep it real all, all the way through. Every day. Not just on no Sunday. Everyday life. You're keeping it real. You're true for your loving one another. No matter if you in that building or not, you're still loving. You're still living right. You're still doing the will of God. You know. But if you're a single preacher or a man or female, if you're single or not, if you're single, you should not be with somebody else before marriage. You should not be sleeping with somebody else before marriage. You know, you should not be sleeping with another married couple or, 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 or me, another married woman or marry another married man. You know, you should not be doing a thing. You know, that's keeping it real and, and within yourself. Because God said not to do them things. Have your own. Have your own wife. Have your own husband. Not to go out to somebody else's. Not to be lusting at somebody else in church while you preaching or teaching or talking about the word of God. You know, looking at somebody, checking out somebody else woman or wife or the hey, other girl, or just a, a single woman out there not checking out her when you know you married, even if you wasn't married. Checking her out and everything, you know, and all this kind of stuff. Boy, I tell you, tell you, I've been to some church and I've seen a lot of stuff happen. Like I said before, you know, when I was 20, I think I was, no, I was 20... I was 28 or 29 years old. I'm going to visit church with a, a, another friend, another man, a, a friend of mine, somebody I knew. Went to his church, visited and everything, you know. And like I said, a preacher, you know, seen me uh, up in there, you know. And just out of nowhere, he said, oh, you sure don't look good. And I'm looking behind me. I'm thinking, I'm looking, trying to see who he's talking to. Talking about, you know, everybody looking at him. He said, you, you sure don't look good. And he came all the way to so where I was sitting from out the pool pit came out from where I was and gave me a kiss on my jaw. I'm like, look, and then I see this lady waiting in front and she turned around and look. And then I'm asking my friend at the time, you know, I'm like, you see that? He said, yes, is that, is that his wife up there in the front? He said, yep. Yeah. I said, wow, I mean, I, was, I couldn't believe it. I didn't go back to that church no more. I really didn't. I mean, that was, that was some really bold stuff. I mean, come way out there, way, I mean, period, you're disrespecting anyway. You know, you marry, why you can come way out to where you were because you're telling somebody that somebody looks good to you, come way where you were. That can't help yourself. I mean, you know, when you don't get a hold to yourself, keep it really disrespecting your wife and everything, seeing somebody younger than your wife and everything, come towards them, approach them. Don't, I ain't never seen a man in my life before. My first time visiting that church. You know, I'm, I'm, and that was my last time going back to prison too. I mean, came way from where I was, gave me a kiss on my jaw. And I've talked about that for days, for weeks, and tell him, you know, over and over, talking about, you know, he said, yeah, I, he said he never did that before. I'm like, yeah, he know he he, he won't do it no more, not with me, because I'm not coming back over there, going back over there to that church, no more, not to that building. And I know, I mean, it just it just had me like. I almost wanted to stop going to church, period. I really did. It just had me like thinking like all preachers like that, all ministers like that. You know, I was just, just thinking how my mind was setting up. I mean, this crazy stuff, you know, almost make me don't want to go to church. But at the same time, the, the church after to be in me. I have to get in the world to the will of God, you know, read, study, whatever, meditate day or night. You know, ask God to, to direct me to the right building, you know, to hear the word of God. Somebody else teaching the word of God. Somebody else keeping it real. Somebody else is real and a real man of God. I don't need no fake joke. Preachers, you know, they can talk about the word of the world is real, but at the same time, you ain't living right. You still got this lustful desire and everything in your heart, and you're supposed to have a 
a nice lady, a nice woman, whatever, a nice wife that God bless you with, supposedly bless you with. You supposed to be enjoying what God bless you with. Enjoy what you have. Quit looking out for something else. You know, maybe look a little better, whatever. It don't mean nothing. Quit looking out for something else. You know, stick with the one what you got. Praise God. Keep it real and do the right thing. And uh, praise God. But sometimes, you know, I mean, you know, this it's just still going. I mean, you know, just that's more like the church is I me. Mean, I don't even really have to go to no building. I don't. But I go to worship with others, you know, talk to others, pay my tithe, whatever, offering, whatever, do what I need to do. But, you know, it's like I'm the church. You know, I can read and, and study and, and meditate and do the will of God. Go out to, you know, somebody need help, help them, whatever. Somebody ask this. I mean, just, you know, do. You know, reaching out to others, talking about the Word of God and everything, talking about Jesus. You know, sometimes if they see me, you know, you know, especially God, they just take stuff. Somebody. They say, the devil just working in their brain. Oh, you so this look good. You single, you know, by the way, you single. Y'all go to church, you go to church. I mean, I, can we go together? I mean, stuff like that. I mean, it's like, wow. It's like, that's the devil. You're not trying to listen to and get the Word, what I'm saying. You know, you're not understanding the word that's coming out of my mouth. Your, your mind is somewhere. Your mind is on my flesh. It's, it's, it's not on what I'm telling you right now. you just trying to get with something, but it's not going to happen anyway. So you might well just cut it. Cut it out. You know, I love you because God say love you and everything. But, you know, you don't want to hear the word of God. You don't want to hear what I'm saying. You don't want to pray, you know. But, you know, but let me go ahead and move on. Somebody may need some prayer right now. Let me just go on, on down the way. Stuff like that, you know. But anyway, God bless you and God keep you. You know, it's about keeping it real and doing the will of God for your life. You know, you even on YouTube. Somebody might see me on YouTube. Yeah, and all of you on talk, talk, you know. Praise God. Go for you all to do the will of God for your life. You know, read for yourself. Because I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm reading every day. But if I'm on YouTube, now I got to stay in the world. Because the world inside of me, I have to live by God's world. And do the will of God. Do what's right. No matter what it feel like. I just have to do. Do my do. Do my do. And the ones that don't want to. Don't, don't do. Then that's on you. You know. You know I mean. You know. I just do my part. And what God has for me to do. And pray for you all. And help one another. And just do what I do. Loving one another. You're not talking about. Not trying to criticize. But you know. You know. Just loving. Caring. Sharing. Praise God. But God bless you and God keep you. Heavenly Father, pray for those watching. God bless you and God keep you. And God be with you and God strengthen you in every areas where you weak. I pray the Lord just make you strong. I pray that you will get in the world, do the will of God for your own life. Not just being listeners, not just being hearing, hearers, and not just reading, but being a doer. Loving one another, keeping God to remember what he wants you to do, what he first called you to do. Stay on course. Stay on, keep your mind on him. Praise God. God bless you. God keep in our every, every sickness and every disease right now. I pray, Lord, just touch and heal right where you are. Whether you got low back pain or whatever it is, arthritis or whatever's going on, whatever pain is going on in your body, I pray, Lord, just heal you and touch you and pain. Release that pain in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. The body strike you is healed. And I believe you is a healer because he's a healer. God is a healer. He's not a killer. Praise God. And he heals you. He wants you healed. He wants you well. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. God keep you. Have a blessed day as well as every day. In Jesus' name I pray. And I pray the Lord of God is angels around you. Whether you're going in, coming out, whatever you're about to do, chilling, relaxing, in the car, maybe being traveled. I don't know what you're doing. Maybe on a plane, getting on the plane, helicopter. I don't know. A ship, a boat. Motorcycle, school, I don't know, walking, exercise. I pray the Lord is touch and be right where you are and protect you and guide you and your, to, the, to the right path where He wants you to be. In Jesus' name, God bless and God keep you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. I know He just said it's going to be easy. You know, He didn't say all these things and people going to test you and Bring all the different things and try to try you. But your main, your main key is long as you doing what's right, doing what God says. Don't even worry about the rest. Because God will move them on out the way eventually. He will move them out your way. He, they, he will make them leave you alone. When you know you're doing what's right every single day, not just on a Sunday, not just in that church, not in that just in that building, but every day, doing what's right, living right, 
you know, loving one another. God's watching. He see whatever you're doing. He see everything you're doing. You can't you no know, secret what God can do. You know, and you can't keep no secret from God. He already know. Praise God. God bless you. God keep you. Remember, God love you. And so do I. Until next time, you take care of God. Say the same. You'll see me again and again and again. And again and again and again. Praise God. God bless you. See you later.